Garter stitch is created when one row is knitted from one side of the fabric and the following row is knitted from the opposite side. When we hand knit, it's automatic unless we purl because we keep turning the work. But when we machine knit, we have to actively turn the work. That's why the garter bar was invented, to make a simple way to turn all the stitches on the knitting machine so that they were facing the other direction. The garter bar I have for my bulky machine is a Chris Crafter bar, and it is a wonderful tool. I've been using it quite a lot lately because I've been designing in garter stitch quite a lot lately. It's a little bit different in operation from the Japanese made bars, and I thought you might like to see it. The flower shown on this hat is demonstrated in another video, so you can make one for yourself to embellish whatever you want. Working on garter stitch projects with my Chris Crafter garter bar, I got really comfortable with it and found out a few things that make it easier, which I'm going to show you in the next few minutes. Central to this demonstration is this little cast on hem which is not your basic cast on rag. It almost is, but it's weighted. And I showed you how to make that in another video. It's also free on YouTube. Before we start, I'm gonna show you how I'm planning to set up. The left side is set to always slip. So it won't knit. It'll pass the needles in forward position. The right side will be set to always knit. You won't always be able to see me doing this because we're going to be focused on these center stitches where I'm actually knitting and turning the work. But every time we're at the left, I'll be removing the yarn from here after I have lifted the stitches off of the machine with the garter bar. I'll be knitting across, turning the work, resettling the work, then our working yarn will be over here. I'll thread it back into the carriage. And when we knit back, of course, it will knit. So every left to right row will knit. Every right to left row will slip. And that doesn't sound like it would work, but it does just because we keep turning that fabric. First thing we're going to do is hang our weighted cast on rag which I actually created just for this purpose. Hang every other needle of the ones I intend to use into the openings in the rag. Now notice something. I've done it less than ideally because if I'm only going to use these five stitches, well let's use one more. It'll be okay. It really needs to be centered so that weight hangs evenly. And then we want a ravel cord in. And since it's so few stitches, I'm just going to knit that ravel cord in by hand. The point of this setup is that it will make the weight not pop off. I could use bar weights, lace weights, claw weights, a combination of things but I have found that while you twist and turn the fabric to move the garter stitch to and fro as we need to do, the weights tend to jump off when you least expect it, just not what we have in mind at all. So now to cast on. And I do want you to understand, you could have used the carriage to knit in that ravel cord. It would have been just fine. I just chose not to. Usually when I'm doing machine garter stitch, I turn every row but not the very first time. I knit two rows and then I begin the turning. So we'll do that. Oops, and I will have to set it so the carriage does knit. And then return it to the hold position because this is the last time I want to knit from right to left. Now see my ravel cord growing? I really don't want that to happen. I want the weight to be held evenly throughout the project. 
So I'm just going to tie my ravel cord together in a little bow. And later I can untie it or cut it. It doesn't matter which one. Now it should not grow at the edges. It should stay even. Step number one for using this bar is something you might not think of. You've got to get the carriage farther out of the way than I have to have it to knit. So I just pushed it all the way to the right. Now needles all the way forward and hook those needle ends into the garter bar slots. They hook very nicely. Now I'm pulling the garter bar towards me and I'm also going to pull the fabric towards me and onto the garter bar with the other hand. It's easier than it seems to be. I'm not positioned where I'd like to be. I'm off to this side. I should normally be right here, but you're right there. So lift it off, comes off no problem. Now off to the right, I'm removing the yarn from the yarn feeder and running the carriage across. On this machine, normally doing that gets all those needle latches open, which is what we want, but always double check. It's not perfectly reliable. Now here is the tricky part of the whole thing. I'm going to rotate it to and fro. What I did was catch the needle hooks in each stitch, but it has to be done with the comb position like this. Then you rotate and drop it out. Now re-threading, positioning to knit back from hold. Remember I've got the carriage set so it will do so. knit. There is no way that garter stitch on the knitting machine is fast. I don't know any way to do it fast, but this is a lot faster than doing it by reforming stitches. It's faster than by hand, and of course it's very even. I'm off, removing the yarn from the feeder, knitting across. I've turned the work, and you always know you're correctly positioned if the yarn tail, the working yarn tail, ends up on the same side as the carriage. That's where it needs to be. Carriage getting pushed out of the way. Settling those stitches onto the hooks. Pull down, and we're free. Pushing the needles so that the, uh, they're forward, the fabric is behind them, re-threading out of your viewpoint on the left, knit across. Needles forward, Chris Crafter garter bar in place. Notice that I'm working without any spacer on the bed. Works fine for me. I do believe Chris Crafter sells a spacer if you want one, but I've never had one. I had this for quite a long time before I got good at it, but you know, practice is everything, and if you don't get on with practicing, you won't be good at it, so I didn't, and I wasn't. But I recently was interested in doing some garter stitch projects and really put some effort into it, and here we are. Re-threading, knitting across. I'm going to do it just one more time, and I believe you will understand it perfectly. This would be even easier for me if I had invested in the little 20-stitch Chris Crafter, because I wouldn't need all this to the left and the right. I, I don't need it for this project. But I don't own that, and this really isn't bad. I'm turning my garter bar, running my carriage across, double checking that the working yarn is on the same side as the carriage. And this time I'm going to try to show you one thing that can go wrong is what just did. I did not have that needle open. 
So that I can quickly back out of. The only other trouble I've had is that if you were too quick and not careful enough and you split the yarn over these hooks, the comb won't withdraw, of course, it's caught, and you have to try again and the second try is harder because getting these safely off, getting everything reoriented on the comb and back down is harder and you have little split spots that get fuzzy. So you just need to be careful about that. But this is how it goes. It's actually pretty simple. And if you're only doing something like a cuff, see, I might be done. That may be enough garter stitch for the cuff. So even though it's a little bit laborious, it doesn't have to be a big deal. Now I'm going to show you the same thing you just saw. It's the exact same clip, slowed down and zoomed in so it's really clear. The first part of the operation went normally. I have all of the slots on needles, all of the stitches moved onto the garter bar without much fuss. Now we can release the garter bar and turn the work. And when I did, I did not get everything perfect. The work turned just fine, but you can see a latch isn't quite open now. Now what we need to be doing is making sure that all the latches are open. But as you will see, I overlooked one. And when I try to align the slots on the teeth of the garter bar with the hooks, they won't align perfectly because it's a rigid plane and it won't want to position any of the stitches perfectly if it can't position all of them perfectly. And that's what's happening. So I need to back out, straighten out that latch so it's open. And if you have a sticky latch, it's, you should change the needle before beginning this. Now all the needles need to be forward in the same position, or again, the garter bar won't align them all with the needles at the same time. And now we should be ready to unload those stitches onto the needles without further ado. Looks like it's going to work perfectly this time with everything lined up. Yep, beautiful. That's how it should look. This is going to become the brim of one of the hats you saw at the beginning of the movie. It takes 124 rows, which takes considerably longer than what you've watched so far. For this much garter stitch, I have found it wise to take breaks and do other things and come back and do 20 or 30 more rows to avoid repetitive strain.